I really am a genuinely excited, as I've said, about Bernie Sanders running. I mean, he's... Uh, and, you know, now that he's, he's run, like, I've now sort of started contemplating the, sort of the mechanics of how he's going to be covered. It's going to be fascinating to watch. Because he's going to be promoted in a way by places like Fox and CNN and all of the media's sort of knee-jerk Clinton hate is actually going to promote a guy I really like. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited at that prospect. Uh, here is at least part of his announcement. We'll let it run. I don't know how uh, I haven't I haven't I watched it. It just uh, he announced during the course of the show. I know he didn't do that on purpose uh, to mess with me. I was trying to screw Sam. Oh, uh, here he is. My view has more serious crises than at any time since the Great Depression of the 1930s. For most Americans, their reality is that they're working longer hours for lower wages. An inflation-adjusted income, they're earning less money than they used to years ago, despite a huge increase in technology and productivity. So all over this country, I've been talking to people, and they say, how does it happen? I'm producing more, but I'm working longer hours for lower wages. My kid can't afford to go to college. I'm having a hard time affording health care. How does that happen? While at exactly the same time, 99% of all new income generated in this country is going to the top 1%. How does it happen that the top 1% owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%? And my conclusion is that that type of economics is not only immoral, it's not only wrong, it is unsustainable. It can't continue. We can't continue having a nation in which we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major nation on earth at the same time as we're seeing a proliferation of millionaires and billionaires. So that's the major issue. The major issue is how do we create an economy that works for all of our people rather than a small number of billionaires. And the second issue directly related is the fact that as a result of the disastrous Supreme Court decision on Citizens United, we now have a political situation where billionaires are literally able to buy elections and candidates. Let's not kid ourselves. That is the reality right now. So you got the Koch brothers and other billionaire families now prepared to spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in elections to buy the candidates of their choice, often extreme right-wing candidates. I'm the former chairman of the Senate Veterans Committee, and I can tell you I don't believe that the men and women who defended American democracy fought to create a situation where billionaires own the political process. That's a huge issue that we've got to deal with. Right now, in terms of issues, we have a Republican Party with virtually few exceptions that does not even recognize the reality of climate change, let alone that it is caused by human activity let alone that the scientific community tells us this is the major global environmental crisis that we face. And I want to see this nation lead the world in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. Real unemployment in America is not 5.5%. If you include those people who have given up looking for work, people who are working part-time when they want to work full-time, real unemployment is 11 percent. We need to create millions of jobs, and the best way to do it is to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure. And I've introduced legislation to do just that, create and maintain 13 million jobs. In my state of Vermont and throughout this country, young people, bright, young, able to keep kids, cannot afford to go to college, and others are leaving school deeply in debt. In Germany, countries around the world, they understand that you tap the intellectual capabilities of young people. You make college tuition in public universities and public colleges free. That's my view as well. So there are enormous issues facing this country. Now let me conclude by saying this, and I say this to the media. I've never run a negative ad in my life. I've been in many campaigns, and you ask the people of Vermont, they will tell you Bernie Sanders has never run a negative ad. I hate and detest these 30-second ugly negative ads. I believe that in a democracy, what elections are about 
are serious debates over serious issues. Not political gossip, not making campaigns into soap operas. This is not the Red Sox versus the Yankees. This is the debate over major issues facing the American people. Honest people, my conservative friends, differ with me, and that's fine. That's called democracy, that's a good thing. But I would hope, and I ask the media's help on this, allow us to discuss the important issues facing the American people, and let's not get hung up on political gossip or all the other soap opera aspects of modern campaigns. Thank you. Let me just take a few. All right, that was... They're not going to uh, keep his, or at least this clip doesn't go to his questions. But, I mean, this is, this is great stuff. He comes out, talks about wealth inequality. He talks about the corruption of our democracy with uh, the money that is pouring into our campaigns. Climate change, jobs, free higher education. Those seem to be the four tenants, five tenants of his campaign. And the, the bottom line is it's going to be fascinating to see how the media covers him because he's not going to get off message. He, every time you see him on television, those are the only five things that he's going to talk about. He may get asked other questions, he will address them, but I'm telling you, those are the five things he's going to talk about because he doesn't need to chase anything else. He doesn't need to be defensive. He's going to, he's going to be able to do that. The question is, how much will they let him on TV now on outlets aside from where he gets on at the moment? And how much is he going to change the debate? at the very least, on the left. But it'll be interesting to see if what he's talking about bleeds in to the conversation on the right. Because the dynamic you have now is everyone on the right, all the Republican candidates are basically doing two things. They are trying to get their billionaire... They're all going to the dance and they're all trying to get their billionaire that will take them through the primary. Some of the people don't even care whether or not they're going to win or lose. They just want their primary. They want to be able to travel for the next eight months. And the other thing they're doing to sort of to prove their bona fides is to massage their billionaire's personal pet projects Whatever it is, this guy loves, uh, this guy wants to hear a tough Israel talk. This guy wants to hear anti-union talk. This guy wants to hear uh, religious fundamentalist talk. Then they also all want to hear anti-Hillary talk. <laughs> At one point in the campaign, and I don't think that we're too far away from it, maybe a maybe couple of months, maybe not until September, they're going to start getting asked questions about policy, and those policy prescriptions are going to come from Bernie. Now, I think because Hillary's going to be sort of, uh, it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be fascinating. 